Well, here I am on the water side here because I'm pulling a Donnie Brasco. I'm introducing you to a friend of ours from New Jersey. It's the Mini Countryman. And as you can tell, it's the all four version. So it is definitely off-road capable. This is not off-road in a sense. This is actually a park. So I wouldn't say I'm off-roading and breaking any of the rules that Mini set me when they loaned me this car. But I do want to show you this car in full detail today because I think it's quite interesting. Um, I've had it for a week and what I can tell you is there are things that come up when you drive vehicles back to back or just over the course of a year. You drive so many cars you kind of have an idea of what you want to look at. But in this case, um, it's pretty clear just looking at it. It is a Mini, but I think it has a lot of competition. One such piece of competition is the Fiat 500X. I drove one. I haven't published that yet. I drove it a while ago from Austin to Houston. One hell of a drive. But this reminds me of that car. So there are cars that are in the same caliber, like the, believe it or not, the Chevy Cruze Premier and the Jetta GLI. Very similar, very similar price point very tough choice to make. The same here between the Mini Cooper Countryman and the Fiat 500X. So let's check out the Mini. Right off the bat you'll see I have run flat tires which means because of that I have more space in the trunk. Not sure how that relates but for a four-wheel drive vehicle because this is um, basically what I get is a large trunk area and then a huge amount of storage down here. Now of course the ride is a little stiff, but I think for a Mini, that's kind of expected because Minis are sporty. Speaking of which, this is made in the Netherlands. It's made in, uh, what is it called? Born? It's born and born. As you see, we have keyless door entry and one hell of an interior. I happen to like it a lot. I'm not a fan of these buttons for the window switches, but I do love the little details here. Like we have the built-in door locks into the handle. Never seen that before. That's really cool. And of course, we have great bolsters here on the seats. These are nice, nice leather seats. Very good leather in this vehicle, especially at this price point and for what it is. You'll even see details like the piping here. Although this is not leather piping, it's more or less a robust fabric, but you have great details on this interior. Originally, I thought that the Mini was a glorified Volkswagen Golf. It was the Golf with more pizzazz inside. It turns out that's kind of right, but it's not a Golf. It's, it's basically on its own, but the competitor to that is the Fiat 500X. So what I'm going to look at right now is why is this car more than the Fiat? And is it worth more than the Fiat? We'll have to drive it. Now inside, I have a lot of cool details. Like for instance, I have a very large navigation screen here, very nicely laid out, very sharp detail. I have air conditioning controls and always funky switches. This one here happens to start and stop the engine. Put your foot on the brake, it glows red. Take your foot off, kind of fades away. This switch here is for the heads up display. This switch turns traction control off. This is the auto stop start, which I can defeat. And it memorizes that function, which is good. And this is of course the backup camera and parking sensors. This does have that. Up here we have switches for the overhead map lights and dome lights. And then this here of course is the sunroof. So it can push the forward half back the second half is actually solid, but we do have screens that are manual. And these shades do a very good job at blocking out unwanted light. My only complaint is that they are black instead of the matching tan. Um, and I would say that after having this car for a week, the one thing that disappoints me is the quality of the material on the headliner. If it was suede, that would kick ass. But at this point, it's just not doing it for me. Everything else in here looks the part. One other weird thing actually, now that I think about it, is this steering wheel, because you'll notice it has this line inside on the front face. 
And that's the same style of steering wheel I remember seeing in the Fiat 500X. Coincidence? No. Basically, that's because the Fiat is a part of FCA, Fiat Chrysler America, which owns Maserati and a bunch of other vehicles, but the Mini is actually owned and produced by BMW. This has a three-cylinder engine, which produces, um, it may sound like a meager amount of power. It takes nine and a half seconds to go from zero to 60 miles an hour. I will tell you, this doesn't really feel like a car suitable for Texas based on that acceleration figure, but there is a JCW version with a two liter turbo engine that would probably be the hot stuff that I would want on my driveway. This one though does the job between zero and 40 miles an hour. It's a pretty good city car. Definitely not something that um, gave me any issues. I, I think that the Fiat 500X feels faster, but this feels faster in a different way. Let me tell you why. You see, straight line speed, as we know, is one thing, but how you get around corners is another. And this thing, with the way I sit in this vehicle, I'm pretty much perched between the two wheels. I am dead center in the wheelbase. And there's a lot of weight in this car that feels very well balanced. That's BMW for you. So when you throw this thing around corners, it is spectacular. Now this car is so quirky. It's got all these fun little things going on for it. I discover new stuff every day in this thing. It's awesome. And uh, you know, you've got great little graphics here for like the fish to tell you how well you are with your economy. And um, it's got these glowing lights that happen to appear when you change the temperature or the volume or change different modes. The lights change color. So if you're thinking the Mini is basically a version of a Golf, it's not. You don't want to go into this vehicle thinking that. I made that mistake and I will never do that again. It has certain price points where it can be a bit of a glorified Golf, but it's very unique. It's very stylish. And it's not really pulling off that sporty hot hatch feel. It's pulling off more of a sophisticated, city charming kind of lifestyle. And um, a test drive will put, make that, it'll put that on the map right away. You'll, you'll know, because the way it holds the road is, well, it reminds me of a lot of BMWs that I used to drive. In fact, believe it or not, this is wider than a two series BMW. Let's close this sunroof, shall we? Look at these corners. So I'm in a normal drive mode right now. It's called mid. There's one called eco or something like that. That's not worth it. It does coast and sail and activate stop uh, engine stopping. And yeah, I don't need it. But there's also a sport mode, and that's cool because when you do that, the transmission goes into sport mode, the engine feels a little peppier, so obviously something's changing there, but the steering dials in nicely. It's actually almost too nice because in a straight line, I feel like there's a lot of sensitivity here. It's almost, it's almost like it needs more straight line stability. But that's an argument for another video and another day and maybe uh, another audience. But for right now, what I can tell you is this thing is fun. It may not be fast, it may not be loud, it may be a little stylish and some people might not like that, but you throw this thing at any corner and it will take it. It will beg for more. And uh, whoo, man, if you live in Coldwater Canyon or you take Temescal or Topanga or Malibu Canyon and let's just say you love corners, this thing is choice number one. Now obviously here in Texas it's hard to drive around these corners. Uh, some of them are full of gravel and dirt. Traction control seems to work quite nicely. Actually when I turn traction control off 
I actually don't notice a difference. This car is so well balanced and handles so well, it never really rescues itself, even in normal driving. So I think that they did a really good job here with this drivetrain and the redesign, everything here helps. I do not like this armrest though. It doesn't really come out far enough and then it has this weird angle for me, at least for me, where I have a hard time using this controller that looks like an iDrive controller that isn't, but it is. That's the only thing that on an ergonomic side is a little disappointing. This one doesn't have power seats, but you can get them and I would highly recommend that. I would basically suggest the Harman Kardon stereo, which this doesn't have, and the power seats. Navigation, you know, if, if you know where you're living and you're in the city and you're not in a new town, you don't really need it. I would skip it, but you know, you do lose a few of those uh, cool details that come with it, such as the heads up display. You just pull this button here and the screen rises out. For me though, unfortunately, I have polarized sunglasses, so I can't see anything on that display. Luckily though, I can just hide it with this toggle switch and it ducks back down into the dash and it gets out of the way. Not that it ever is in the way because it doesn't really come up very much off that dash. But just cruising around town, it's a very smooth ride. It is firm. I uh, attribute some of that to the run flat tires, but it is also a mini. I mean, you can tell it's a mini because when you do put it in sport mode, you do get a message here that shows up that basically <laughs> like encourages you to drive mini style. It also has weird stuff in here like the mini country timer. Don't know why. Uh, apparently they do want to push you to go off-road in this thing. And then there's one called driving information. There's one called technology in action. I can see minimalism. And then I have this thing called sport displays. I can see my torque and my horsepower. There's all sorts of cool stuff, slightly distracting, but sort of cool. And then there's this weird thing too, where it checks the range of the fuel, the temperature of the engine, the outside temperature just throws on some funny graphics and then it says sport activated sport on and then B mini okay so there it is it's just a really fun vehicle sort of a departure from what you'd expect from everybody else it certainly isn't a boring Kia it certainly isn't a boring Honda and this thing definitely feels solid it, it feels like a BMW and maybe it is maybe it isn't it could still be British-like. I don't think there's anything in here other than the piped leather seating that makes it so British these days. I do like the touch response on these memory buttons. You, all you have to do is just touch them slightly and they show you what the memory setting is. That's a typical BMW thing. The trunk is large, the seats fold down. I mean, it's a typical hatch, but, and this is the big but. I'm gonna come back to my conversation point earlier about how this is similar to the Fiat 500X. I think the Fiat overall, because it's a slightly lower price point, could be a better purchase decision, but it's more or less one of two things. And it comes down to my philosophy. There are two types of buyers, those who buy the car and those who buy the deal. So if you're looking for a deal, you might want to look at the Fiat 500X because I think it's very similar to this Mini Countryman and I think it provides very, very good features similar to this car. But if you're looking for something with all the substance and all the class and all the style you can possibly squeeze out of this price tag, which um, happens to be $36,750, I think the Mini is the way to go. So thank you for watching. I always appreciate comments from my subscribers and definitely like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, I know this drive was a little bit slower than my usual drives and that's because this is a three cylinder, but I'm not really in the mood to push it hard other than through these corners. I can take corners without any fear in this thing, but it's also a very chill car. This is just a, a little bit more everything than that Fiat. And I'm glad I had the chance to drive a Mini finally. I've been asking to drive a Mini for a very long time. This one has an automatic transmission. It's an eight speed versus a nine speed in the Fiat. 
but it also has the panoramic sunroof. It has everything you'd want in a modern vehicle. But the headlights, I would have to say, are decent as well when I drove it at night. Speaking of driving at night, you should check out what this thing looks like at night because it lights up. It's fantastic. It's a little crazy, but I think, I think crazy is okay, especially when you're looking for something that's not just mundane and dull and boring like. Well, thank you for watching. I have more videos on the way. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for leaving a comment. Thank you for hitting the thumbs up or the thumbs down, doesn't make a difference. And um, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up though. I do this work for you guys. It uh, doesn't pay very well. It is sort of a dream job, except for when it's 100 degrees outside and 50 plus percent humidity in Texas. Not so easy to put on cameras and turn the AC down so you can actually hear me over the microphone. But it's what I do. It's cool sometimes. And of course, you get a car for one week at a time, and sometimes the weeks fly by, they're real short. Sometimes the weeks just don't end fast enough. In this car, the week has been just right. Um, I do wish it had more power, I'll be honest, but at the same time, I love the way it handles. I love the, the leather in here, it smells great in here. Everything about this car is very upscale. I also wish it had the Harman Kardon stereo. So if you're looking for one, definitely get the Harman Kardon, go for the bigger engine if you can. They're very stylish, very sporty, and uh, just get one in a better color than this.